A Brock at the Howard, Brock at the Howard Shy, Brock at the Howard, Brock at the Howard Shy, Brock at the Howard, Brock at the Howard Shy. All praises to Yahweh, Bashim Yahweh Shy, double honest to apostles and elders of Great Millstone, and uh, Shalom to the elect. Okay, the name of this video is going to be uh, hmm, What Does It Mean uh, to Play the Serpent? Right? Because uh, a lot of us, we always talk about that. Oh, you got to play the serpent, got to play the serpent, got to play the serpent. Uh, we, were at, we were taught. By the apostles and elders of Great Millstone, who are learned men, okay, to do what? To play the serpent, all right, with everything that we do. You know, when we go forth, you know, uh, out in the world, we go into work, dealing with your woman, okay, dealing with your woman, even your own parents, man, your siblings, your family members, all right? We were taught to play the serpent, man. Why? Because this knowledge is dangerous, okay? It rattles minds. Okay, uh, Apostle Paul said what? Am I now your enemy because I tell you the truth? Okay, us having this truth and having the Holy Spirit, okay, draws wars with these people that have unclean spirits. All right? So, us being in this world, we have to have, to have a specific kind of conduct. Okay? It's besides, you know, just not wearing your fringes. Out in the streets. Okay, we don't promote that. We don't promote walking down the street wearing fringes. Okay, we don't promote necessarily, you know, being Israelites, if you if you will. Okay, promoting Israel, you know, calling yourself, <laughs> uh, rebuking people in the middle of the street and causing uproars and things of that nature. You know, as we get into this knowledge, we first come in, you want to curse out everybody, you want to tell everybody. And then as you grow, your level of discretion, which another word for discretion is discernment, grows and in, and in heightens to where you know and when to choose and pick your battles. Okay? So that's a part of this truth, part of this knowledge. Okay? So without further ado, we go to, we're going to go to the, the lamb's mouth himself, the sheep mouth himself, the man named Yahweh Shai who taught us how to c conduct in this world. All right? Which he was the ultimate serpent, okay? He was the if you want to learn how to play the serpent, you got to go to the serpent himself, Yahweh Shai, man, okay? So to speak, okay? So without further ado, Matthew ten and fifteen it says, "Verily, no, I'm starting sixteen. Behold, I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves, right? Aren't we? We're, we're the lost sheep, right? Now a sheep." Is a, a, a individual because it's all symbolic, okay? You got sheep, you got goats, you got different beasts, okay? The scriptures liken men unto, okay? Now the sheep, all right? The sheep belong unto the shepherd, which the shepherd is Yahweh Shai, okay? Yah Yahweh Ba'ashim Yahweh Shai, all right? And the sheep are called by the Holy Spirit, Ba'ashim Rechak Wadash, okay? So once that spirit resonates, with you, you are uh, you are considered a sheep and you ought to follow the shepherd. All right. So it says, I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. Who are the wolves? The wolves are these people in this world, starting with the uh, wicked of our people. OK, along, you know, going into the two thirds and the rest of the wicked of our people. OK. Because just so brothers understand the two thirds represent the wicked that are going to not be taken up when the chariots come. However, you have the wicked that will die here in America before that scene occurs. You have the wicked of our people that are in the rest of the four corners of the earth, okay, that are not a part of the two-thirds, but they are the wicked and they do represent the wolves, okay? You know, when you go on a job, the worst, the worst person to deal with on a job is a nigga, man, all right? It's been, you know, it's always too... I'll say this too. It's always that guy on the job who so-called has knowledge and you're able to talk to about certain things. He's the biggest demon himself. Okay? He's the, he's the biggest wolf. Okay? He's a wolf in sheep clothing. Okay? So you got to, through experience is going to come by, of course, to what? You're going to learn how to be discreet. You're going to know how to deal uh, sub, subtility, deal with subtility, subtility, 
Okay, excuse me. All right, so I'm going to read it again. Behold, I send you as sheep in the midst of wolves. Be ye therefore wise as serpents and harmless as doves. Okay, now why did Yahweh Shai say be ye wise as serpents? Why? Because the, the nature of a serpent is not dealing straight. Okay? The nature of a serpent is crooked. Okay? By the way, I want to um, shout a brother. You know, his name is uh, Kualaf. I believe he's the head brother in the other Louisiana camp down there. I, can't, I don't know the name of the, the brother's page. If a brother knows, brother, if a, if a brother knows the, bro, the brother's page, post it. You know, that's what I'm talking about. Okay? Because uh, that brother was, uh, I wound up talking to that brother. We were talking about this. And to be honest with you, a lot of the um, <clears throat> scriptures that I'm going to go into, you know, he brought up. And I said through the spirit, I said, he sparked me to do this video, okay? And that's how the spirit goes, man. Okay? Now, it says, therefore, wise as serpents and harmless as doves. A dove, a, 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 um, a serpent doesn't deal straight, Okay? A serpent comes off crooked. A serpent doesn't let you know what angle he's coming from. A serpent is sneaky. Okay? A, ser a serpent is very crafty. Okay? Now, let's go to Genesis chapter 3, verse 1. Okay? It says, now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field. Now, this serpent wasn't an actual serpent, okay? What proves that when you read further, it said that he was going to eat of the dust of the ground. What serpent you know eats dust, okay? That doesn't happen. So, this serpent was an actual man, okay? He had the spirit of Cain on him. He had the spirit of Esau on him, okay? That same wicked spirit was on him. It said, now, the serpent was subtle than any beast of the field, Right? which the Lord Yahweh, the power, uh, had made. All right, now let's go into that word subtile, okay? Because this is the reason why he was called the serpent, all right? The word subtile, it says, uh, I rawum, I rawum, or I rum, okay, is the root word. Matter of fact, I want to look at this for myself as well. To be subtle, to be shrewd, be crafty, beware, take crafty counsel, be prudent. See that? To be prudent. It does not the scriptures tell us to be prudent? Okay? So let's go back. Something I like to do is go into these words. The word subtile. Let's go back into it. All right? Now let's scroll down and you'll see there's different scriptures with that same Hebrew word in it. And it gives, you know, a, 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 a more of enlightenment to what. This word is trying to portray. Okay, now let's see. This is Proverbs chapter 12, verse 16. A fool's wrath is presently known, but a prudent man cover of shame. That's right, a man of wisdom. Okay, a man of discernment knows how to cover his shame. But a fool is presently known. A fool is going out in the streets, walking around with fringes, uh, 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 telling everybody he's an Israelite, you know? Telling everybody that America is going to be destroyed. Telling everybody that the, that the Most High hates the so-called white man. Telling everybody that the, the, the Most High is going to destroy America and all the wicked, okay? He's he he's he's an open book. He's easily read, okay? Verse twenty. Uh, I'm gonna go jump down. This is Proverbs 12, twelve and twenty three. A prudent man concealeth knowledge. Okay, what does it mean to conceal? He holds it tight. It's not for everybody. A man of wisdom knows that. Okay, a prudent man knows that. A man that plays the serpent understands that. Okay, but the heart of fools proclaimeth foolishness, right? Now, one scripture, let me get this scripture real quick. Okay, let's see what foolishness is. Okay. Let's see, because you can have the right thing to say, but still be foolish. Okay. It's all about timing. Okay. This is Sirach. I didn't have this one lined up, but the spirit hit me. Sirach 20. And I'm going to start at uh, verse 19. An unseasonable tale will always be in the mouth of the unwise. A wise sentence, a wise sentence shall be rejected when it cometh out of a mouth of out of a fool's mouth. 
for he will not speak it in due season. And that's the point right there. Okay? It's about timing. Okay? Timing is everything. Let me see something. Okay, that was the point. I thought it was more. Okay, here we go. Verse 30. Wisdom that is hid and treasure that is hoarded up. What profit is them both? Better is he that hideth his folly than a man that hideth his wisdom. Necessary, keep, ne necessary patience in seeking the Lord is better than he that leadeth his life without a God. Now, the point is that, because you know, you can kind of get tripped up. The point is that what? That the wisdom is only for a certain people. So the scripture says what? That always be ready to give an answer to him that is sincere, man. All right? You got to heighten your spiritual discernment to know who's sincere and who isn't in this world, man. And know who to distribute it to and when to distribute it. Okay? So that's enough on that. All right? Another scripture, Proverbs 13, 16. Every prudent man, this is the same word for subtile, the same word that was described for that serpent, okay, that was in the garden in Genesis, the third chapter. Every prudent man dealeth with knowledge, but a fool layeth open his folly. Proverbs 14 and 8, a wisdom of the, the wisdom of the prudent is to understand his way, but the folly of fools is deceit. Okay, that, that's enough on that. Okay, that's enough on that. Okay. So let me go back. All right. Now, I got some other scriptures. All right. Better yet, what we'll do is we'll go into a a uh, 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 account where one of our forefathers played the serpent by the name of King David, man. Are we not of the house of David? So David is another man that we ought to look up to and to look at his manner to see how we ought to conduct. Let's see what he did. All right. Excuse me. It says. Now. Uh, so. All right, so basically David in this account, 1 Samuel, the 21st chapter, he got back the uh, sword that uh, Goliath had, had. Now, Goliath was from Gath, a, a place called Gath, G-A-T-H, which is a place of the Philistines, okay? Now, I was going to explain. Now, verse 9, it says, And the priest said, The sword of Goliath, the Philistine, whom thou slewest in the valley of Elah, Behold, it is here wrapped in cloth behind the ephod. If thou wilt take that, take it, for there is no other save that here. And David said, there is none like that. Give it me. And David arose and fled that day for fear of Saul and went to Achish, the king of Gath. And the servants of Achish said unto him, is not this David, the king of the land? Did not they sing one to another of his dances? Him dances, saying, Saul have slain his thousands, and David his tens of thousands. Right, because the, the, the people of Gath, they knew of the reputation of David. So being that David was in the land of his enemies, okay, just like we are today, right? He knew he was in a hot situation. He knew he was in a sticky situation, right? In verse 12, it said, and David laid up these words in his heart. So he thought about what they said, right? And was so afraid of Akish, the king of Gath. And he changed his behavior, right? Meaning what? He changed the way he was conducting himself, okay? Before them and feigned himself mad in their hands. Now the word mad, let's look it up. Is halal. No, no, I'm sorry. Halal to shine. Okay, to flash forth light, to praise, to boast, be boastful, right? To boast, to praise, okay? To be praised, made praiseworthy, be commended, be worthy, praise, okay? Here we go. To act madly, act like a madman, to make a fool of, make into a fool, okay? So that's what, that's what David did. He basically changed himself into a fool, man, okay? He said he feigned himself mad in their hands and scrabbled on the doors. So he basically grabbed, he probably had like a, 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 a 
what do you use? Those things that they used in the ancient, uh, like a gavel or whatever. And then started writing on the on the walls and started scrabbling that. So David, David was basically playing retarded. He said he scrabbled on the doors of the gate and let his spittle fall down upon his beard. I mean, David started drooling. He started acting like a madman. Right? He says, then said a kiss unto his servants, lo, see, the man is mad. Wherefore then have we brought him to me? Meaning what? The people of Akish, they wanted to kill David, right? Because of his reputation. But when David played the serpent, he, he, he was able to live. He said, it says, have I need of madmen that ye have brought this fellow to play the madman in my presence? Shall this fellow come into my house? He's like, man, get this man away from me, man, pretty much. You know? So David escaped. Right now, I want to get this scripture. All right? Bear with me. Oh, that's Satan. Salakia. Okay. It says, uh, this is Sirach chapter, uh, I'm sorry, Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse 4. For to him that is joined to all the living, there is there is hope. For a living dog, right? A, a living dog represents a heathen. Right, a dog represents a heathen. Is better than a dead lion. A lion, you know, represents an Israelite. Okay, but when you play the serpent, especially out in this world, you basically playing like a heathen, so to speak, man. All right, like for instance, people be like, you know, you know, we come, we we were just in the uh, the, uh, the feast of unleavened bread, and you know, you might have got tempted with, you know, uh, maybe uh, uh, your coworkers bought some pizza, and you know, you're not supposed to eat it. You know, you don't be like, well, uh, it's the Feast of Unleavened Bread. I'm keeping a Passover and I ain't eating that shit. Y'all going off and the Most High going to destroy y'all for eating it. You don't do that. Playing a serpent, you know, the best way, you know, I, I recommend you would say something such as, you know, uh, well, I'm on a specific diet right now and um, yeast is not good for me at this moment. That's playing a serpent. Or you dealing with a broad, say for instance, or you dealing with anybody and they offer you some shellfish. Well, you know, uh, 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 shellfish is not necessarily good for me. Um, they're bottom feeders, you know, so I, I typically me, I don't eat that because I like to eat healthy. Or you could say, uh, uh, I'm allergic to shellfish. Okay. So you, you basically, you, you, you play, that's playing the serpent, man. Okay. And brothers have to ponder on these things, man. You got to come up with different subtile ways to, to get by in this world, man. All right, because this world has a heavy, dark spirit on it that wants to pull you down and pull you out the truth. And we know we can't get carnal. So we got to use psychological warfare on these people, man. All right, and that's what playing a serpent is. Okay, so let's go back. All right, now this is 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 8. No, I'm going to start at uh, Verse four, but in all things approving ourselves as the ministers of the Most High in much patience and afflictions and necessities and distresses and stripes and imprisonments and tumults and labors and watchings and fastings by pureness, by knowledge, by long suffering, by kindness, right? By the Holy Spirit, by love unfeigned, by the word of truth, by the power of the, by the power of the Most High, y'all watch him, y'all shy, by the armor of righteousness on the right hand. And on the left. So you got it. That's what we're here for. All right. We're here to know how to play the left hand side, man. We're here to know, know how to play the left hand and play the right, man. Okay. The complete evolution, man. Okay. To be to be the uh, uh, that shining light, man. All right. It says by honor and dishonor. Right. So you're going to you're going to be in situations that's going to look dishonorable. But Paul saying, hey, man, you're going to have to go through that. Right. It says by evil report and good report. Report you gonna have people saying negative things about you, okay? It says as deceivers and yet true. There's people saying, look, or oh, oh, this guy's a deceiver. They might walk by the camp and see that you was out there, and you you know the whole time, you know, you basically portraying yourself as something else, and then they see you at the camp, they're gonna think that you a deceiver. But guess what? You still true. All right, we true to Yahweh Bashim Shai, and that's what matters, man. That's why we pray in the closet, man. Everything that we do with Yahweh Bashim Yahushua is for our own personal relationship. Okay? So that's it on that. Now I got uh, another account. This is uh, Joshua chapter 2. I'm going to start at verse 1. And Joshua, the son of Nun, sent out of Shittim 
two men of, to spy secretly, saying, Go view the land, even Jericho. And they went and came into the harlot's house, named Rahab, and lodged there. See? Now, we're all vessels, smaller vessels, to play to achieve the greater reward. So a part of this, the playing the serpent is a sacrifice as well, man. Okay? Just like these two spies that Joshua sent out. Because there was a greater task at hand. And that's what you have to understand. You got to learn to lose the smaller wars to win the bigger war, man. Okay? Learn to take L's in this society, man. All right? Learn that you're not going to win every battle in this society. Then you will be a greater serpent, man. Then you will be a, a more wiser man, man. Okay? Continuing on, it says, And it was told to the king of Jericho, saying, Behold, there came men in hither to tonight of the children of Israel to search out the country. And the brother Kualaf, you made a good point. You think these men were walking around with their mitris on real tight? You know? And uh, 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 with long, big, long fringes, like some of these Hebrew Israelite camps do, walking up and down the street, marching with boots on, shouting, standing in military format. All right, you made yourself an easy target for Esau, man. All right, not knowing what that you you need to be winning, losing these smaller skirmishes to win the bigger war at hand, which is spiritual, man. Okay, it says in the king of Jericho. Sent unto Rahab, saying, Bring forth the men that are come to see to thee, which are entered into thine house. See? See, these men would see when I first heard this, you know, when I used to always think about these this account, I used to always think that they were hiding in the bushes, you know, maybe had like a form of a, a, a scope to look to see what's what. No, they was up in the mist, man. They was walking, they was walking amongst them Canaanites, man. All right? They was rubbing shoulders, man. Maybe had hoods on, you know, maybe trim their beard down a little bit. Whatever the case was to get the mission done, man. All right. It says, and the king of Jericho sent unto Rahab, bring forth the men. See, there was a report that the men were there. It says, bring forth the men that are come to thee, which are into, into thine house. For they come to search out all the country. And the woman took the men and hid them and said thus, there came men unto me, but I wish not. Which they were. See, she basically lied, man. She played the serpent, man. Her name, Rahab is actually mentioned in uh, 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 um, Hebrews the 11th chapter, man. Okay? So, hey, man, that's the point, essentially, man. You know? Learn to play the serpent, man. Basically, to get to achieve the bigger mission at hand. Learn from our forefathers that didn't want to play the serpent during the time of the Roman Empire who got put to flight, man. Because they didn't know how to play the low, man. All right? Now, I'll say this too. Learn to play the serpent in righteousness even amongst the brothers in camps as well. You may have a quarrel and a difference between a brother, man. You know? But, hey, man, play the serpent, man. You know? Hey, well, you know a brother, you know? You may not feel... You may not uh, 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 like the man at the moment, but you, you play the serpent in righteousness to basically say, you know what? For for the for for the sake of righteousness, I'm gonna act like I like the brother, you know, for the time being, you know. And then you 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 basically move along, you know, and because some hey, some people you just gotta have a scopeo on, man. And you keep the scopeo on them, but you don't outright out, outright say it, you know. You basically you 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 play the serpent, man. That's all I can say, man. And I'm not saying. That there's certain brothers you look, man. I I, I had the privilege to be in a big camp. Not every brother gonna get along with each other, man. You know, but Yahweh Shai said basically, you know, um, if you salute the man that your brother whom you basically you get along with, what difference are you than the Pharisees or I think he mentioned the publicans that only salute their friends, the mean to salute only the ones that are cool with you. You know, so you basically play the serpent. With brothers, and you still salute that because you never know. He still might be a brother, man. All right? Hey, but I just say, I say all that to say, you know, brothers got to level up, play the serpent in the spirit, you know, and, and be more wiser, man. Be more prudent, you know, in these day and time, days and times, man. And with that, all praise to Yahweh, Bashim, Yahweh, Shai, double honest, our apostles, and elders of great millstone. Shalom to the elect. I'm basically just going to let it play because every time I upload the video, you know, it keeps trimming my video. So I'm going to just, 
you know, let it play for the time being. You know, and if, like in 30 seconds, I'm going to cut it off. Shalom.